You're here, I'm queer, and welcome back to my channel. Well, well. Halloween is here again, and to celebrate it, I'm collaborating with these amazing artists to give you some spooky ooky dolls. So make sure to check out Tan Dance, Blank Space Dolls, Characters Factory, Delightful, Dolls Brand New Look, Enchanterium, HLE Crafts, His Name is Akeen, Heroes Workshop, Moonlight Jewel, My Mini Mon, Hope and Atelier, Scariositis, Sky the Golden, The Doll Fairy, the Dolly Geek, and Chimay Creations. And I'll have all of their links down below. Now, to add to my villain doll collection, I will be creating Maleficent. I am so in love with Maleficent from the animated to the live action version. I remember being so obsessed with her cape, her magic, and overall finesse and elegance. Although her live action still served a lot of plot holes including the new movie, the success of them gave her character a new life and design. You guys gotta see the new movie Maleficent 2, The Mistress of Evil. I was so gagged by it and of course Maleficent's looks were all so sickening. I had to come to the theater and watch the movie, but also serve all the fantasy, so I knew that dressing up as Maleficent would feel correct. It was definitely not comfortable, um, to say the least, but like I said, it felt right, it felt correct at the time, you know? And it was also to entertain the moviegoers. I love her velvet look, spoiler alert, she had like, she has a velvet look, an all over velvet look, and I am so obsessed with it, but nothing beats the iconic original evil fairy look. So I will be creating her infamous never invited to any gathering, party, or event dress from the first live action movie. I just love how they translated the animated look into this edgier leather look. I am a little biased though since I do love an all black regalia. I did want the inside of her cloak to be a cat suit that mirrors dragon scales to reference her dragon transformation in the original animated movie. So with all that being said, let's get this evil party started. I wanted to give this doll more of a high fashion take on Maleficent, so our victim today is this pink haired silkstone doll. I chose her because her skin tone almost has a great tone to them, and pretty much she's the only silkstone that I know of with articulation and also be the palest of them all, and so that would match Maleficent really well. So first, let's go ahead and take off all of her hair. To remove a silkstone head, I will be boiling her head to make them softer. Just to note with you guys that the hair dryer method doesn't really work well for silkstone heads, I mean in my case at least, because these heads are very very stiff. So boiling water is the way to go. It is very dangerous, however, so be cautious. After removing the head, we can now fully remove her hair. Now I take off her factory paint using acetone or nail polish remover. Using epoxy sculpt, let's give her her horns. This is such an iconic design and it is such a beautiful harmony of fashion and fantasy. I decided on the sculpted method because I want this to be very sleek and sculpting it would give the better effect. I will not be spoiling the movie for you guys, you do have 
to definitely watch it. It is truly iconic. It is so legendary and I am so obsessed with it. I watched it a few times um, because obviously the first time I dressed up as Maleficent, I was very uncomfortable, um, but it was truly iconic. A lot of people thought that I was actually hired by the theater to be there and pose for pictures, you know, but I was just there. I was just there to have fun. I was just there to serve a look and I'm so glad that everyone loved it. I felt happy that they were happy, you know, I was able to take them out of the reality and really give them the feel of Maleficent being there. It was very fun sculpting the folds of her headdress and all of the details. However, the hardest part was getting the symmetry of the horns. I feel like symmetry is just hard in general. After the horns cure, we can now move on to her visage. We first have to spray and prime the face with Mr. Super Clear or MSC before we are able to draw on it. I take my watercolor pencils, in this case Derwent, um, to sketch the initial design I want for Maleficent. I use a lighter color so it is easier to erase when we make mistakes. I also give her Angelina Jolie's Real Beauty Mark to emphasize her palish skin. To give her skin more dimension, I use chalk pastels as a blush and also as shadow. The makeup I wanted her to have is a combination of the purple from the animated and the neutrals from the live action. Her eye color kind of reflects her power and it is actually animated in the live action movie. The positive ones are always golden and the offensive powers are usually always green. If I directly copy the angled cheekbone to this silkstone head, it wouldn't look right for me. The silkstone head is too rounded, it really doesn't have any angles, so it would just be a mess. Instead, I gave her a very sharp line using tape, and this works so much better in lots of angle, in my opinion. Since Maleficent is a huge drag icon, at least for me, um, why not give her some hints of drag makeup here and there? I also gave her jaw a shadow to really define the Silkstone's head sculpt. Now it's time to add the small details. Building up the colors and minute details becomes easier when everything is mapped out. Thank you. 
like I said, you guys are gonna die for the costumes in this movie. Aurora, Maleficent, and the Queen. Actually, everyone has a multitude of costumes, and I was gagging. Um, I watch the movies not just because of the story, not just because of the characters, I also look into costume. And I was so gagged. I was gagged. Ah! Now let's go ahead and paint her head wrap glossy black to give it that patent leather look. Now let's also gloss up her lips. And now we have the face of Evil, and I absolutely love her. Barbie Millicent who? We have Barbie Maleficent. It's becoming a trend for me to take these gentle-looking dolls and giving them an evil makeover. <laughs> Why not? Now let's move on to her hands. I'm painting her hands to give this medieval, fingerless, gloved look, and I am giving her the iconic red-bottomed nails. You guys know my love for the red bottoms for the shoes, and when I saw Maleficent having them on her nails, I knew she was truly iconic. To make the nail look a little more realistic, I am using my glue gun to give her the almond-shaped claws. The polish on top is in nude color, but I also gave it a coat of pearl on top. Now let's make her staff. I'm using a piece of chopstick and this dollar store pearl earring, and I just secure the earring on top of the stick with super glue. And to make the wood like details, I use hot glue. I like using the hot glue method on really fine details like this since it dries really fast and you get a much better effect, in my opinion. I then painted with several layers of brown acrylic paint. Then I give the orb a coat of green to paint it and prime it. We're gonna go over it with several layers of different colors of greens, yellows, pearlescent, metallic, just to give it that orb-like, power-like look. I also highlight the staff with gold to represent her positive magic and to also give the staff a fantasy feel. Then I brush the whole thing with black to age it up a bit and match Maleficent's overall design. We cannot forget Diablo or Diaval, her right hand. I got this bird from a figure bird pack in Michaels. It's not a true raven, but the overall shape is there. I painted it matte black to start with, and I gave it a light layer of blue for a realistic raven look.
To give the feathers a subtle sheen, I gave it a light coat of glossy black. And now we have our wings. I wanted her to have this ram skull brooch to give her a more sadistic look, so I just paint over it with silver and black to have that gunmetal look I'm going for. The boots I'm giving her is from the classic black dress Silkstone Barbie, and I was gonna give her pumps, but I decided that these would probably be more sensible. Of course, the red soles are a must for Maleficent. And for the evil shroud, I had the amazing deluxe designs make my vision come to life, as always. And with the catsuit and cloak, thank you, thank you so much. This probably translates more into a snakeskin look, but it's okay since she wears a lot of snakeskins on her everyday casual looks. I wanted her cloak to have more of a leather look so that we can push the fashion a little bit further and I want it to be very dramatic and you guys know me, Hexgen equals drama and um, yeah. I did add some wires to the collar behind the scenes so I'm able to bend it and pose it. And I made her neck piece using this literally a uh, cut up rectangle pleather fabric and I just add a snap to it. Easy peasy. Now let's give her some bling. And this is another dollar store earring. As you can see, it's a stud, and it is a perfect signature ring for her. So, get on with it. Mistress, Rarity has... Disappeared? No. Um, she's... Lost her horn? No. Coella and Rarity has... Don't ruin my morning. Diaval, freshen your feathers. We have a launch party to attend to. We're able to agree on not using pony hair, Cruella. Well, darling, many might disagree, but I'm quite understanding. <laughs> and I thank you for that. This collection is going to be... Uh, what? Well, well. <laughs> what a glittering assemblage, Cruella. Royalty, nobility, the gentry, and... <laughs> How quaint. Even the rebel. I must say, 
I really felt quite distressed and not receiving an invitation. Oh, darling, you're not welcome here. Not welcome. Oh, dear. What an awkward situation. Well, in that event, I best be on my way. And I hope you're not offended, Your Excellency? Why, no, Rarity. And to show I bear no ill will, I too shall bestow a gift on the collection. Contain your animal, or I will. Listen well, all of you. The collection shall indeed receive grace and beauty, beloved by all who sees it. But before the sun sets on the last she makes, Rarity will prick her finger on the needle of a sewing machine and fall into a sleep like death. A sleep for which she will never awaken. No! Caesar! <laughs> <laughs>